<laughs> okay. There we go. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Ben Duke. Uh, I'm the artistic director of Lost Dog. And uh, I am here to talk with Lewis Holt about his, um, his work, about phrases and footnotes, um, which you've just experienced. So um, thank you, Lewis, for that work. And uh, yeah, here we are. No problem, yeah, cool. Um, so I, I was just gonna ask you a few questions about it, if that's all right, and see yes, if we have it. Uh, what I asked for, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, uh, I loved, I loved them. I loved the experience of watching them. I felt quite um, kind of messed with in a, in a, in a, not not in an unpleasant way. I felt kind of I felt like you were slightly messing with me or disrupting me, and I wondered if that was. Um, a name of yours? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, people have often like, when people give me feedback on stuff when I'm kind of working on it, they often say that they kind of get this sense that I'm quite cheeky and don't know what's going to happen next. And it's kind of like, could just pull the rug out from under. And, and it's, it's never really anything I'm consciously intending to do. I think that's just how it ends up when I make stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know why that is. So yeah, it wasn't. It was not. Yeah, it wasn't really intentional to have that kind of messed with sense. Unless I suppose maybe it was in terms of like I like to play with people live in a room so when it comes to these videos it's kind of weird because it's like putting that exact same material into this live space and, and I into this uh, virtual space mm -hmm. and what I enjoyed is the kind of messing with people in the live space so I can like see them and experience something with them um, so it's nice to hear that that kind of translated mm, definitely. Um, yeah I think that makes sense does that make sense that makes sense, yeah. And this idea of disrupting, though, do you do you do you ha do you relate to that idea of of disrupting? I'm not sure whether that's yeah expectations or form or or the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think they're both kind of works which were attempting to articulate something of. Uh, a state of feeling unable to communicate um, and that when you kind of try to formalize that into uh, an artwork or something repeatable mm. it, yeah disruption becomes the kind of the material texture of what, what you end up working with I suppose right but yeah yeah um, so, so can I ask that slightly annoying question? Well, I, I imagine it's slightly annoying around around kind of improvisation and and the and the relationship to improvisation. So obviously this is filmed work, which maybe changes the relationship to improvisation. But um, do you? Yes. How how do you, how do you use it in the kind of structuring of of work of of your work? These works. Mm. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. That's, it's like kind of very core to my practice in general, improvisation. So improvising movement and also text. There's kind of like, there's improvised nuggets inside the pieces, which I'm sure you can tell. Um, and then there's also like things which were set from improvisation and a lot of the text in certainly phrases was kind of like having a having a work in progress performance or something and then like not really knowing what I was going to say but having a kind of vague idea it's going to be like this 10 minutes I'm going to speak I don't know what it's going to be so kind of and then you know making sure I film that so that 
goes well, then it can be taken forward. And if it doesn't go well, it can be burned mm -hmm. um, in the garden. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so the, yeah, that's kind of text improvisation. And then movement improvisation is kind of the, the main way that I engage with dance is kind of improvising. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I put kind of tasks and scores in place to kind of frame it. And I realized this when I did these shows for an Edinburgh run that like, sometimes you don't want to have to think about like improvising. Yeah. It's like when you do 24 shows in a row and you're like, oh my God, I have to drum up the same kind of, um, mm. <laughs> responsive headspace and you know mm. so i kind of landed on um kind of quite repeatable structures which kind of came just through like doing it again and again and again same improv scores again and again and again mm. it became more and more set um but by the time we were recording these films i'd kind of forgotten all of that stuff so it was kind of coming to it fresh again yeah and and how did that how did that um it's it's really enjoyable watching things where you have no idea how they are constructed and i wondered whether you, whether improvisation had something to do with your kind of connect the way you connect things it's because sometimes the experience of watching it is like something has just occurred to you and you're just going to give that time and then and then you go oh no, that's not just an aside. This is now turned into a the whole next scene, or it's turned into something. So, the the experiences of slightly following a a, a kind of not not linear uh, thought process. So, I wondered whether you discovered those links through improvisation as well, or whether that was more, um, yeah, more considered. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of different ones, isn't there? That there's one i think something that fascinated me was like investing loads of time and effort in something which seems like a throwaway comment or idea mm -hmm. like yeah something something really appealed to me about that like the kind of indulgence mm. Like the doctor's comment, for example, like <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, riffing on that idea, like yeah, really seriously. Yeah, just like ad infinitum, mm. ad nauseum. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that I think is something really pleasurable when I see it done by other people. Is like how something which you thought was just like, yeah, a, a cough they did to the side mm. and then suddenly like there's a whole song made out of coughs or something <laughs> i don't know yeah something like that like massive investment in in small gestures or comments mm. yeah yeah so there's a kind of um uh i think one of the things that i found or, or, or I noticed in myself as I was watching was my desire for kind of theme or or like um, uh, story, and you kind of offer that. You, you offer those. There's moments where I go, oh yeah, it's that. It's this is the thing, and then then I'm like, oh no, that's not the thing. Mm -hmm. And so it has this kind of almost like a a collage, and that 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 again kind of it feels like there's quite a lot uh you're there's a kind of generosity in that going here it is there's this and there's this and there's this and uh there you go um <laughs> is that is that your kind of is is that your way of uh yeah thinking about the world or is that just a kind of um something that you enjoy as a as a system it's not a system, but a process, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, yeah. I've, I've described phrases as a collage before mm -hmm. because of this very thing of, like, of course it's linear mm. because it takes place over a period of time, but in a sense, it doesn't have to be. Um, 
it's kind of all woven into itself and there's not really like a climax or a, a mm. moment where everything makes sense and i think that for that piece certainly it's this um that is kind of just how i was feeling about the world at that at the moment i was making it and i kind of still feel that way a little bit like about like kind of opening up possibilities and questioning what um what might seem like common sense or or truth mm. and um and just kind of dwelling in that space of like kind of interruption and mm. confusion and kind of i think there's I, I always well i describe it in like this blurb copy as it's like um solidarity with people who are confused and anxious i think that kind of is one of my favorite ways of summing it up mm. and that's i guess that's kind of a broad thematic thing for that piece but it doesn't tell you that <laughs> directly yes. anytime yeah it, feel, it feels like they're, they're kind of commenting as well on on, on yeah the, it feels like they're commenting on on my desire probably lots of people's desire for, for that kind of sense you know like T tie it up for me or kind of help help me make sense of it and and I enjoyed how that was kind of you you, you played with that in the whole thing but also in it's kind of the it, it it resists that kind of logical I mean footnotes particularly I guess with that with that very verbose kind of you know that that tech you're literally dealing with these words and yet the words I, I love the moment where you're kind of delivering a footnote the first time you deliver a footnote that is a physical i think it's to do with the shapes or something where you're like oh yeah that that couldn't actually be a footnote it couldn't exist as words and so at that point the words and this kind of sense and logic starts collapsing in a really interesting way so yeah definitely uh, yes i can see that idea of, of it speaking to to confusion and also just going we 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 spent too much time with with um logic and, and rationality and there's this whole other whole other thing going on which doesn't fit into those patterns i suppose yeah exactly yeah i think that's that's what i was kind of aiming for with them was to try and like speak to this kind of weird intuitive level underneath mm -hmm. like rationality mm -hmm. which is like really hard to tap into but yeah. if you kind of just <laughs> do some stuff, maybe it <laughs> mm. maybe it goes there. I don't know. And 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 does does that mean that you use then the intuition to go? I feel like that should happen now, and I feel like I should do that next. Mm. Is that how you? I'm fascinated by the idea of how you, how you would structure something like this. <laughs> 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 yeah i mean the footnotes one was like really it was kind of straightforward in a way but also not phrases mm. was kind of more confusing generally and maybe using some of this like intuition thing but footnotes was like write write the script mm. choose some words at reasonable intervals mm. <laughs> try and work out what i could do with bouncing off each word and then add the whole baby layer yeah <laughs> over the top so you've got these two things coming along and then a third one which interject yeah. and that's that's basically how it goes but it, obviously it's way more complicated <laughs> than that mm. it's also like how do i make a um how do i engage with this idea of this kind of weirdness this un intellectual intellectualizable thing but also make a fairly enjoyable arc for people to receive in a space yeah um so i need to kind of tap into something of a traditional like setup development climax mm -hmm. you know, conclusion thing and i think i you know i think i managed to do those things but yeah no i think you do i think you do and there's there's a bit of a kind of um 
I'm not sure. It feels somewhere between a kind of magic trick and a really long joke or something, you know, like something that's kind of just carrying on and weird. But actually, particularly in footnotes, I suppose I felt that that moment of um, and 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 I know I know that I'm I'm slightly reaching for things and kind of imposing things, but I felt particularly that moment where the conversation with the person who who I kind of interpreted as a as a therapist of sorts around around the baby and the the moment where you say I'm doing a presentation and they kind of say oh do you remember is that okay because do you remember what happened last time and at that point that I do have a sense of a kind of of a story somehow of this kind of oh I've just witnessed something that's happened just now or something that's already happened before that you know you're talking about with this therapist um and yeah I both found that satisfying and also also was like no I'm I'm oversimplifying because it feels like the other the other theme in there is this lack of consistency of you of all of us as a as an entity I suppose it feels like it delivers that idea in both the pieces very clearly like there is no there's no solid sense of character here or you know it, it, it's it's all over the place yeah and I think yeah that's there was always a kind of intention to leave things a little bit vague and try and like say some stuff but like hold back from painting the picture too clearly so like in those conversations it's like yeah I feel like there was always, yeah, this sense of try to withhold to to leave mm. these possibilities for people to imagine that maybe this maybe this is a person who this keeps happening to, or maybe it's not. Maybe this is another trick, or you know, mm. trying to leave some vagary. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you a bit about humor as well. I, I um, uh. Yes, I mean, I think you're very funny and uh, there's a kind of, um, uh, it feels like humour sits kind of throughout and, I'm, and again, I'm not quite sure who you're laughing at or with or, but I also feel like maybe sometimes you, you could, you could deliver gags and I feel like you're maybe choosing not to do that and I wondered if that was true or whether that was um yeah whether that was a decision or again a kind of just a, a byproduct of it yeah yeah it's interesting yeah I think there's um I've done a, a a bit of stand-up mm -hmm. and some sketch comedy stuff and I kind of I love to include humor because I kind of see it as a a way of um, like opening opening a door for for people into different kinds of emotions um, yeah like a kind of relaxation to and a possibility, a way of possibly guiding them somewhere else. Uh, but I kind of, I, I never really saw these two shows as kind of like comedy shows. Mm -hmm. So I think that's maybe why I kind of didn't reach for gags when I, when I could have kind of done them more, mm -hmm. could have done them more um, forcefully. And also there's a kind of sense, certainly with phrases, that there's a kind of soft, air in the piece for me um, which kind of it, it makes me feel like I'm kind of happy with the the sense that it's a kind of 40 minute one delivery of one joke yeah and when it comes to hearing about the eggs at the end of that shouting bit talking to the doctor mm. like that's the punchline that was set up 25 minutes ago yeah so yeah kind of happy with that like stretching 
it's horrible for like sending footage to people mm -hmm. in applications if they say give us a five minute clip. It's like, well, you could have a setup or you could have the punchline. Yeah. Which you want. Don't have both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. That yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a sense of the the kind of atmosphere of this piece, and actually, sounds like you didn't want to. Um, again, maybe that's about expect expectations. If if the gags are kind of coming thick and fast, then maybe we're into that whole thing of of expecting them or yeah, wanting them. But th but there's plenty of bits which are really, um, yeah. The, the, I mean. The, there's a kind of smile. I feel like I'm smiling throughout in a way, but not so much the kind of laugh out loud. There, there, there are moments of laugh out loud, but it feels like it's, and, I, and I've, it felt like you were kind of making that choice somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I it's always felt a bit more kind of gaggy mm -hmm. when I would do it in front of an audience. Yeah. Like, yeah, something that the, the the kind of sense that, that that I look like I'm playing a character in that situation, I think, amps up a bit of a humorous thing when you're with people. Yeah. Um, but still, yeah, it, it never made enough sense to be called a comedy show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think people were always just a bit like, is, is this laughing stuff? Am I? Yeah. Did I laugh? <laughs> and, and how has that been then, that transition from that experience of, of performing it in front of an audience to to this now filming of it because you you I mean you do talk to the camera but you also made the decision you don't do the whole thing to the camera you you you're kind of talking to a room as well mm -hmm. yeah it, it's um I think it's a yeah a really big thing that everyone's been struggling with is how do we do these things like also without having much time to research how to do these things, you know? Mm. Yeah, I kind of thought it was just best to try and recreate it, you know, as much as possible. So the kind of broad address was kind of something which I wanted to keep in. But also like, it felt nice knowing that people would be watching this in their homes, thinking that I could kind of, at points, like speak to the camera, mm. and kind of reach through the screen a little bit. Um, so that was kind of, you know, it's a way of mitigating the weirdness of watching a theatre show on, on your computer. Mm. Um, but also, yeah, I didn't want to do the whole thing down the lens. Because it, you know, it's still staged. It's still, you know, happening in a black box frame. Yeah. And also, there was too many cameras. We had four cameras. Mm. <laughs> it would have been quite the editing job to kind of constantly yeah. Yeah. cut between. Yeah. There's an interesting kind of duet that happens as well with yeah. uh, the camera that's that's uh, that's in the space with you. Um, yeah. yeah. That's that's kind of subtle, subtle dance going on there as well, which is really enjoyable. Has it been, I mean, I know, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're kind of, I, I don't know, <clears throat> as you say, everyone's kind of trying to work it out and struggling with it. And it's quite easy to just go into the, oh, it's annoying and and it doesn't, you know, it, it's not it's not the thing that we've, we've kind of practiced or uh, are skilled at, but have there been things about this experience that have been enjoyable or, or kind of have, have opened up? other stuff for you you mean the the making of the film the filming of it yeah yeah i mean it it's um yeah i mean it was quite, it was quite nice to do it uh kind of weird it's like something i would have never chosen to do you you would just film it when you did it in front of an audience but um I mean, it was it was a broadly speaking pleasurable experience. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just like such a such a compromise. 
um, that it kind of, it, yeah, it feels kind of, yeah, weird. The mm. positives, like, compared to doing it normally, don't kind of scream out at you. Yeah. But it, but it wasn't, it, it was, you know, painless. Um, yeah. As a thing. And, you know, it's also like, this is great for archiving, which I, I'm not very good at. Yeah. Um, so now I have these kind of concrete, you know, preserved in amber versions of these mm -hmm. shows with subtitling. You know, that's also a thing. It's kind of, it's great to be able to have this archive footage in a very accessible form. Because we're yeah. also getting Sue McLean to do some uh, BSL, which will that'll be on there when it kind of exists okay. online eventually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's a quite a nice element of it, is that it's kind of, yeah, it exists more accessibly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's lot. I mean, there's lots of, I have lots of, there's one, maybe one other thing I'll, I'll, I'll just ask about quickly, which is, which is probably, I, I feel is maybe a central preoccupation of yours in terms of the, the, I feel like you 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 like words. I feel like you're kind of into words as a as a medium. And uh, there's an interesting thing here: is the words kind of become important, and then we slightly lose in footnotes, particularly we kind of lose track of them. Um, and then I just wanted to ask how how you feel then about that uh, that whole moving thing and the the kind of are you are you always has it always been about bringing these things together and and, it, and is the moving thing a kind of something that you think of as as a, a process for yourself or a kind of space for yourself that is is uh private or is it part of the communication that the words are doing that's a really weird question or not there's not a very clear question but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny it kind of it does it you know it makes a lot of sense to me. Mm. Um, yeah, it's uh, for me. My attachment to dance, like I, I started when I was nineteen, and started because I just kind of um, really enjoyed doing little bits of improvising um, with some people I've, I'd met at the time. And so my, and then I kind of went straight from like starting into doing lots of like somatic stuff. Um, and then onto a degree, which was kind of broadly based on improvisation. So for, for me, dancing has always kind of uh, existed as quite a joyful, um, pleasurable experience. Um, and a kind of, yeah, ex free expression of like whatever's going on inside my body or my mind or both. So it's, uh, yeah, it's never really too much about communicating anything particular. And I think that's the thing which I do struggle with when I kind of make shows is like, okay, how do I make it so I can do the dancing, which I really want to do. Mm. And I kind of want to show people for mm. some reason. Mm. How do I do that in the the arc of like the dramatic arc of what I'm making? Like what what does it contribute to the drama um, or the story or the the texture? Um, and that's kind of an ongoing question, but often it kind of ticks some box of like climax of <laughs> energy mm -hmm. and it's kind of that simple and or you know maybe not climax but kind of soft entrance dance which is you know just leading people into the room or something yeah so they kind of tick very simple boxes and i kind of tune you know uh, what i'm dealing with in that dance to kind of amp up or amp down mm. that particular texture but yeah, so it's it's always been very separate from the words for me. I've never I've never really engaged with anything 
which connects them directly through speaking, yeah. which really felt like it was what I wanted to put out there. Certainly when I did it. Maybe like open improv. Yeah. I, I enjoy doing speaking and, da and dancing at the same yeah. time in that. But, but that's always so... Um, what I enjoy about that is, is how open it is. And so if I try to put that into a piece, then it yeah. kind of like loses yeah. its you know, identity a little bit. Um, yeah. That's a long-winded way to answer this. No, 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 it's, it's good. It's clear. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess normally this is when, you know, we open it out to the audience for other questions. We can't really, can't really do that in this particular format. But, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to, to kind of say, that thing of, uh, or, or not. Or... Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, um, just uh, thank you to everyone for watching. Um, thank you, Ben. For having this chat with me it's a absolute pleasure to have you here thank you um yeah i think that's that's just it is there anything else you want to say do you want to plug anything no 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 <laughs> thanks for asking me it was great to uh to watch the work and to, to have this conversation so yeah thank you so much great well um be well everyone um yeah thank you for watching <laughs>